Yo, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It is Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024, and I cannot believe that I'm about to say this, but the new toy room is complete. The new toy room build-out, I should say, is complete. Let me be very crystal clear in regards to this video. This is not a collection tour video. It is not. So you will not be seeing my full collection on display here today. That rhymes. Hey, hey. Rather, you will see simply what is the end result of nearly two long years in the making. For any and all that may be interested in seeing the end-to-end -end process, all of the ups and downs, the trials and tribulations, the drama, everything that has transpired over the course of the past two years, I have a playlist here on the channel called Building My Man Cave. You can see it all there and catch yourselves up. For those that have watched all those videos, I would even recommend going back and re-watching those videos. Refresh your memories. In my humble opinion, that will only make this video more meaningful, more fun, and more entertaining. So, with that said, let's cut the chit-chat because this has been a very long time coming. I will flip the camera around and show you guys, give you guys a tour of the new toy room. Nearly two years, two long years in the making, 70 grand in the hole. Was it worth it? We're about to find out. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Here we go. Quick shot of the room as you walk in. And as you can see, I've already begun moving in. <laughs> wasted zero time doing that. I think a good place to start this tour is with the lights. Four switch panel, all dimmable. And the first switch is to the main lights of the room. I went with non-recessed wafer LEDs. These sit flat and flush to the ceiling, and they are super bright. The second switch is to the gimbal lights. These are small form factor, adjustable lights that give a really nice museum-like downward lighting effect to these standalone displays. They also line the entire room, so just to give you guys a better idea of the effect, I will turn off the main lights for a moment. You can see the really cool shadowing effect it gives some of these pieces. And if we pan out a little bit, you can also see that this room is lit enough to function in. So if I wanted to have a chill time, maybe even fall asleep, Get on Diablo 2 or EverQuest P99, I would probably just have these gimbals on. I wanted to make sure with the lighting down here, not only, of course, that I would have sufficient amount of light everywhere, no dark spots or anything like that. I wanted to make sure that I had a variety of lighting to fit my moods. Pop this one back on. So that is the second switch. The third switch is to the main island display. Actually, let me turn these off now so you can just see. That is the hive for anyone that may be unaware. Easy choice to stick in the middle of this room. I wanted something with real presence, 
which this has, this thing is massive. Sculpt on it is one of a kind. If you haven't seen this in person, it's something to look forward to. This thing is amazing. I'm actually in the process of cleaning it and completing it. I, I have two hives here, down here in this basement at the moment. So I'm looking to complete this one. And I just replaced the split door hinge, which is fairly common for this playset. Replace the door itself, and I'm gonna replace the cardboard backing and landing pad as well. But that is the third switch. And then this fourth switch, I'll leave the lights off for now. The fourth switch, goes to this, my 1991 DC Comics Batman light up. Shout out to John and the good buddies over at Toy Wiz for gifting me this nearly five years ago. It's surreal talking about this right now, having it hung up in this room. John and I, a good friend of mine, we have been talking about hanging this thing up for that amount of time, for a good four or five years now talking about what we were going to display it with. And I plan to put my Toy Biz 89 Batman stuff right here. I'll have a little Toy Biz Superheroes corner, which I think will look pretty awesome. The last switch here is to the Govi LED strips that light up the two back towers and all of the custom cabinets around the corner in the nook area that we will get to momentarily. I think we will, of course, do a tour with all the lights on and to round out and conclude the tour, we'll do a lap in night mode as well, just to give you guys a full effect of the lighting for this room. So that is the light switch panel and all of the different kind of lights that we have for the room. For flooring, I decided to go with polished concrete. Initially, I was going to go with tiles, but after thinking about it, it doesn't matter the kinds of tiles or style of tile that I would have picked. The Any sort of tile pattern alone, grout pattern, I feel like would have been Way too busy for this room once, you know, I start populating it with stuff. I really just wanted something neat, clean, something with a little shine that wouldn't take away from toys. And that is exactly what I think this floor does, the purpose that it serves. I did not put any colors into this. It is just the natural concrete of the basement polished. And I went with a light to medium shine. I didn't want anything. I didn't want to look like you could walk down here and slip and fall, um, but it's just enough so it's not dull, and I'm happy with how that came out. For the walls, the paint, the paint scheme, the walls are a raspberry truffle from Benjamin Moore. My thought behind this was a few things. First, I wanted to pick something that when thinking about my collection, the actual pieces in my collection, a lot of fantasy stuff, some early 90s, late 70s superhero stuff, mostly the fantasy stuff though that I had in mind, and Hulk, really. Um, I'm a big Hulk collector. I thought that having a red backdrop, especially with that Kraken over there, I thought about him specifically and my D&D &D stuff, but... Um, I just think that for the items that I have in my collection, the red background suits them really nicely. And I was going to put vintage posters behind all these displays. I even think that would be too busy. I really like how some of this stuff looks just as is. Um, that middle display between the Tally Toy Chest and Kraken, that is where I'm going to put my Hamilton Gifts Hulk. Shout out to JT Frazier and Sasquatch Toys and Comics. Behind him, I will put a vintage 78 Hulk poster. So I might do like every other one a poster, or just depending on the pieces that I, that I put, like that toy chest, which I did not plan to leave there, but I'm going to now. I, I, was, I put them up there to clean. 
And taking a few steps back and looking, I was like, wow, that, that actually looks amazing. I was going to put them on the floor in a different part of this room that I'll show you guys shortly, but um, I really like him there. Obviously, I wouldn't put anything behind that on the wall. So it really just depends on the pieces as I move in. I'll figure all that stuff out. The soffit, I went with a DeLorean Gray. I thought it was a nice opportunity to break up the room. Uh, this room is about 700, roughly 700 square feet. It's roughly half of my basement that we boxed in here. And I thought it would be a pretty cool idea to not just have everything all red, especially on this wall where we have displays beneath. And then I thought it would be nice to have some separation from the main room here in that back nook without making things look too busy from a paint perspective, from a color perspective. So happy with that turned out, how that turned out as well. And then a matte black finish for the ceiling, both the ceiling and all these displays. I was really going for a warm studio, museum, old school movie, theater, hobby shop, all in one kind of vibe. That is, that is what I'm going for, what I was going for. If anyone is familiar with Westchester County, New York, back in the 90s, there was a hobby shop. They had two locations, Dragon's Den. I used to go to the one on Central Avenue. My mother would call it dark and dreary, but walking in there, you know, it was pretty dark in there. But I wanted something that wasn't going to be dark and dreary, but I wanted something warm and cozy that would be reminiscent of that to me, kind of bring back those feelings. And just something that felt like I was walking into an escape. And for whatever reason, these are the colors that stood out to me to accomplish that, and I think that I did. So I'm happy with uh, overall all of the color choices that, that we made here. For the cabinets, these are all plywood custom cabinets. This is, this is actually two separate displays clasped together. Really when designing this room, I wanted to do what was best for my collection, but also do what's best for the space. And I don't think that putting a bunch of floor to ceiling cabinets in this part of the room would have been good. I would not have enjoyed that at all. I could have put, I mean, that would allow me and enable me to have exponentially more stuff. I just don't care, less is more to me here. I wanted to try and give this space some character, some variety. I didn't want to just, you know, pretty much have like a 700 square foot storage room for toys. I wanted it to feel like something. And so when you walk through it, I wanted it to flow properly, not, you know, obstruct any sort of pathways. I wanted the room as you, as you walk through, I wanted it to feel like, I wanted it to feel like it, it leads into itself. If that makes sense. I wanted a nice flow to it. And I wanted to, I wanted to display some of my bigger pieces out. I wanted them, I want them to breathe. I want you to be able to see all of it. And, uh, that is why I decided to really put my statue influence here. Initially, a few years ago, when I was thinking about this room, I was still collecting statues, quarter scale, third scale, third scale stuff. I was going to put my third scale Dark Knight from Prime 1 here, right below the, the bat symbol. But um, I wanted to bring my statue influence to the vintage play sets. This is all art to me, so... You know, displaying this stuff and giving it a proper, each of them, their, you know, their proper spots was important to me. So that is why I decided to go with these open standalone displays. For me, it, it just gives me an opportunity to really appreciate some of my favorite pieces. But uh, anyway, all of these against the wall here, 24 inches wide by 24 inches deep by 41 inches high, which means I can fit most play sets 
on those stands. This is 36 inches high, so it's shorter. It's a bit shorter than the wall displays. I did not want to have this center display the same height as the wall displays. It would have felt like you're walking into the room and you walk right into a cabinet. I actually have some spare 41 inch tall displays on the outside of the room that we put in here to test and it was bad. Especially knowing that I was gonna put something big in the middle here, it was, it was not good. My visceral reaction when building this room out, I wanted this smaller, some of the contractors were like, oh, you wanna keep it the same height? And I was like, I don't know about that, but um, we had some spares, we put them in here. I was like, no, immediately it was like, no. So it didn't, it felt like it stood out. Did not feel like it was part of the room here either. So dropping this display down a few inches, making it a little shorter, wrapping it with the floorboards, um, it's perfect to me now. So th those are actually four separate standalone displays clasped together. And of course, 24 by 24, that corner spot is 30 by 30 by 41, 30 inches wide by 30 inches deep by 41 inches high. And this guy is 45 inches wide by 30 uh, inches deep and 41 inches high. So that is three fourths of the main room here. These are actually custom boxes that were inserted, created and inserted into the windows. We could have just blacked them out, but I saw it as a good opportunity to kind of have spots for organic display. I love the idea of using the room itself as a display, if that makes sense. So I have three opportunities to do that with these windows. It's pretty deep too. These windows are pretty deep. They're over a foot deep. So I could even fit play sets up there if I wanted to. I might put some robots up there. I think it's a good spot for Shoguns, Gorzak, all sorts of robots. But um, so those are custom boxes, box inserts for the windows. And as we move here to the back of the room, let me give you a shot. You can see what we are about to walk into. And this is the main room from the other side. I wanted to make sure also with these standalone displays that there was clear separation between this part of the room and right behind me. So it's important that you can see that gap there and that's intentional. I didn't want this part of the room to feel too close to this big display here. So this, this slab, the big old slab, that initially was going to be for my attorney and it might still be for it. Big Motu display, but I'm tempted to put my D&D collection there because I do need to track down a Fortress of Fangs box, which I could actually put now that I'm thinking about it, right up there, which would be friggin' amazing. I literally just thought of that. Wow. So that makes me want to get that box even more uh, now. <laughs> but I fully plan to track that down. I do have some boxed AD&D stuff from LJN. So I think, I don't know. I, I'm not sure what I'm doing with that yet. But that whole space was created to ensure that I had enough room for just about anything. So it's 125 inches wide. 35 inches deep and the towers here are 82 inches high by 20 inches deep so I can fit fit some stuff in here as you can see all of these shelves are adjustable so initially I was going to put the Tally Toy Chest Hulk down here. I thought it would have been a cool spot as you walk into this back nook area. But as you can see, another tower. The things that needed to be symmetrical, like these towers are, and then where I wanted to kind of create some depth and layers to the room, like with this box, we did. Another angle of the room from 
this side. Again, this space would have been too big, I think, to just put floor to ceiling cabinets. If I had a spare bedroom situation, and I think the guys that pack it into a bedroom thoughtfully and artfully, I think those displays look amazing. And if I was doing the spare bedroom thing, I'd do the same thing. But this room is just, I think it's just a little too big for that. Got a chi -Tech three headed dragon there and an Imperial two headed dragon, classic. Walking into the back nook here, you guys that have seen the old videos, this should all make a lot more sense now. I'm going to put art over here. I am going to hang and mount my graded carded cabinet stuff there. Have some shelving for it. And then more art on that angled wall. This, figuring out this space was tough. I went through many ideas. It was very difficult to figure this out. And then at one point I was like, let me just make this simple for myself. Since I don't have this style of cabinets anywhere, you know, you've got a lot of angles here. It's not a huge space, but as you can see, you know, at first I talked about putting like standalone displays possibly in those spots, but then you run into messing up you know, we're obstructing the view of that wall. It was just, it didn't make sense. This makes sense. Again, going back to working with the flow of the room, that is what I tried to do here. And um, it, it really was a great, it's the perfect spot to do the floor to ceiling thing because, because exactly what I've been saying, it's not a huge space. It's not that room. So this whole wall is 20 inches deep. Uh, the height is 85 inches high, and then this wall is actually 12 inches deep, same height. Get a shot here from the corner. So there's plenty of walking space here. This is most likely where I will be doing lots of my YouTube stuff. And I can easily set up a table. There's several feet between walls, which is nice. And my graded cards, like I said, putting up the shelving here for that, my magic cards. And I have a lot of Clyde Caldwell, Larry Elmore art I'm going to put on the angled panels. Um, yes, I could put more toys there, I guess. But again, I just having shelving sticking out as you walk in, it just would have been too much. For my liking so this is good I can move around and plenty of spots for toys I can put play sets with the box in this spot it's great and then uh, up top there's about 15 inches from the top of the cabinet to the ceiling so plenty of room to put stuff up there too all right guys that is the Tour of the toy room. I will meet you over at the entrance of the room and we'll do a quick lap in night mode. We'll leave Batman on. You have to leave Batman on. These Govi lights are all adjustable. Bluetooth enabled, so you can manage them from your phone. The last thing I wanted, I don't want remotes, no remotes, none of that. So I actually, those wires down there, we are going to tidy up. But uh, I really like the, the glow with the red walls. That was a late addition up there, putting the LED strips for up lighting. This night mode tour is really just to kind of show you the glow. Check that out. That's awesome. I love that. That was another reason that I picked the red, is that with the cool white for LEDs, I thought it would be 
and it picks up on camera real nice. I thought it would be really awesome in the dark with just the LEDs on. Another option for me while I'm down here. Pretty sweet. Now, there were actually some, a number of late additions for lighting, which dragged this project on into March. Some of which you're seeing now, all the up lighting there up top and the gimbal lights as well. We added between the wafer lights and the gimbal lights, we added 11 total lights in 2024 when the project should have been over based on, you know, my walkthrough with my general contractor. I was like, nah. and I told them too, I'm like, I'm not an electrician, but I do know display lighting. I'm telling you guys, this is not going to be enough. So uh, the gimbal lights in this room didn't exist, but they do now. The up lighting did not exist. It does now. So pretty cool. Just really wanted to show you guys night mode down here. And that's it. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for the very first room tour here in the new toy room. I did want to take a quick moment to thank each and every one of you, not only for supporting the channel, but for supporting me over the course of the past two years, this arduous journey, all of your encouragement, your suggestions, your outreach, your general support. It was all incredible. You guys are awesome, and I could not be happier to share this with you here today. It's been a very long time coming. Two years in the making, 70 grand in the hole. Was it worth it? you damn right. It was worth it. And truer words could not be spoken when I say, ding dong, daddy's home. Thank you all again for all of your support. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'm going to go unbox some toys. We did it.